started my career as a teacher teaching students of all ages. During the Civil War, my sister and I brought wounded Civil War soldiers into our homes and helped them to heal. Soon the soldiers nicknamed me Angel of the Battlefield. After the Civil War, Hello, I was born March 26, 1930 in El Paso, Texas. I spent most of my early years on my family's Lazy Boy Ranch on the Arizona-New Mexico border. I graduated Stanford University with my B.A. in Economics in 1950. I was born on January 1st, 1752 when the school was a Quaker. My aunt was my role model taught me how to sew. Let me tell you a time when George Washington informed me to make the American flag. I was born in 1595. They said I was a very playful girl. That's how I got the nickname. I went to live with my mother in a tribe that my father, she called out. No, I lived there until I was 10 and now I went and lived in my dad's village. I lived in my dad's village until settlers came and captured me. While in captivity in 1614, I met a man named John Roth. I, got I was raised in Massachusetts, North Austin, with my two sisters, my two brothers, and my parents. I was known as Angel of the Battlefield and founder of the American X Rock. I had two sisters named Tally and Dorothy, and two brothers named David and Stephen. I had not. As a child, I never attended a day of school. I would usually be outside helping around the farm or inside helping around with the household. Chores were outside. I usually got picked on by John Adams, along with my sister Betsy and my other sister Mary. When I grew up, surprising that I married John Adams, having five kids, raising them on our farm. I am a very famous man. When I grew I am a very famous man. I live in Boston. When I grew up, I became a silversmith then a soldier. After that, they gave me a huge job to become a town crier. I worked on the job for a long time. There were a few situations in my life. One of my situations was trying, was trying to get 60,000 Cherokee natives to the reservation to Oklahoma. Another situation was that a lot of my brothers and sisters were dying. One of my events was trying to inform President Abraham Lincoln about what they would do to the tribe. Let me tell you about Tom and I volunteered in the Army as transfer to your office company as one of the greatest adventures in American history. Thomas Jefferson named me as governor in New Louisiana Territory. I learned about map, ma map making in Philadelphia and about medicine. I was born in Trenton, New Jersey on my family's farm. I'm the daughter of John George and Gretchen Ludwig. I got married to William Hayes, but he had to go to war as a gunner. I went with him as a water pitcher. Let me tell you about the time my husband was wounded and eventually died later that day. I did not stop but kept moving on, so I took his spot and made him king. This magnitude is great with this age group because they learn the history through actually living it. They get to make their own props, they get to do the reading, the writing, and they experience it through the social studies core content. So when they actually get to perform it in front of people, it actually comes to life for them. That's why we call it the Living History Museum. I spent my life outdoors ready and attending Sunday school. I am a social worker and reformer and I was able to create a settlement house, a center that provides services of poor community. After I graduated in 1881, I joined the Women's Medical College in 1580 at Willoughby, England. My, I was one of the first American heroes. My father died when I was only 16 years old. Then I, then I joined the volunteered with the French. As pioneer settlement work in front of the house, the hot house was open to help newly immigrated Europeans. I just survived in America. Let me tell you about a time that... I'm a war chief in the Sioux tribe. I protest against Colonel Custer for pushing us off our land into a reservation. I fought many wars, including the Battle of Little Bighorn. I'm brave and always on guard. I fought the Great Sioux War. I love the, ba the Battle of the Bighorn. Well, hello, my young friend. Let me tell you about myself. I was born on February 11, 1847, to 18 Samuel Edison. All my life, I had a very interest in science and inventing. I even built my own lab to in when I was just 10 years old. I did face many challenges, though, such as my dyslexia. I also started developing. Hello, my young friend, she's scared me. Why then? Let me tell you a few things about me. I was the first president of the United States. I moved from Alberta to the White House. Well, I didn't want everyone to know I became president because they throw a big part in celebrations. But that didn't stop them. I was also the general of the continent. In 1800, Thomas Jefferson and me and William Clark took the world in New Land, another American I was the first American to see the Pacific Ocean. I remember we with the Army and winning and exploring the New Land and the Pacific Ocean. And his grandmother died in the Army and his mother left him and Thomas Jefferson. Do you want to know how I came to love hunting? Well, I tell you, start off with the love of guns and grew from there. My dad had a few different jobs. One was fixing guns in a smithing shop. When I was young, he said he sent me to working in there with him. I know about guns and rifles. 
One time I remember getting hit in the head by a sailor and said I was running in here for my master. I was going to the store when all of a sudden another slave came running in trying to hide from his master. And then his master came rushing in after. So then I grabbed a slate and tried. So then this master tried to grab a slate and hit the slate. They've been working on this project since January 3rd. They've worked really hard for the last three or four months trying to prepare. They've learned their character through their um, through uh, writing and internet research, reading books, and they've really taken part in this character. I've done many great things in my lifetime in this nation. Like I wrote the draft of the Declaration of Independence, I became the third president of the United States, and I wrote books lots of them. One time, I collected many old bones and made a book about them. I made many friends in my lifetime, like General George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, John Adams. I came to the colonies as a Puritan and settled in Massachusetts Bay Colony. I found that the preachings were not to my liking, so I started my own church. The men in the colony did not like what was happening or what was going on. They said I was not following Puritan practices or Puritan beliefs, so I told them that they were not preaching the Bible as proper as Puritan ways. I was an American inventor, scientist, and businessman who developed many devices that greatly influenced life around the world, like the motion picture camera and the long-lasting practical electric light bulb and the phone graph. Let me tell you about a time that... When I was a little boy, I was kidnapped twice by Englishmen. That's how I became fluent in the English language. When I was a little older, I was an interpreter between the colonists and the Native Americans. I helped the pilgrims live through their lives. I helped them plant crops such as Three Sisters Corn, Bean, and Squash. Without me, they would not be alive. I was, I was born in 1597 on Chesapeake Bay. I was raised in my mother's village, so I was old enough to be on my own with my father. First time I saw Englishmen was in May 1607 when they landed at Jamestown. The one I felt most like was Captain Jones. I was the 16th president of the United States. I was married to Mary Todd. I had four children who all died at very young ages. Now let me tell you a little about the time when I wrote the Gettysburg Address. It became known as one of the most famous speeches in history. It started out like this. Four score and seven year ago. I was referring to the American... I was president of the United States of America from 1952 to 1960. I was also a of both World War I and World War II. I am Buddy Eisenhower. I wrote the Declaration of Independence. I was mayor of Virginia during the Battle of Yorktown. The battle was the last of the revolution. I was also elected president in 1800. Let me tell you about a time when I was almost captured by General Cornwallis. When Cornwallis entered our interior, we were almost powerless because all our brave. I was chosen by President John F. Kennedy to be part of the Apollo 11 Space Project. I trained many months, sometimes until midnight. I made many speeches about the space program around the United States. Buzz Aldrin and I were good friends. We were on the space mission together. We made, we collected cotton and not widen, I had help, what was the punch button? And by not widening the buses in the state of Alabama. Before that, I started my career as a pastor and not, pastor and, pa career as a pastor in It's experience for our fifth grade kids and for all the children of Shepherdsville Elementary is one that brings together a full year of learning. They get to learn about one historical character that they've chosen and they get to dress up and play that role for a day. As you've seen today, that many of them have really enjoyed it and some have been nervous and some have been excited. And the most fun is to watch the younger students come in and see all the hard work come together. It's a great experience and I hope we keep doing it well into the future. I was born in the Powhatan village in Virginia. I'm the daughter of a very powerful chief. People call him Chief Powhatan. I never really knew who my mother was because my father married so many different times. I was a young princess with many brothers and sisters. Let me tell you about the time I saved John Smith's life. I'm the daughter of Stephen and Sarah Barton and the youngest of five high class children. I made the country's first free school in Bordertown, New Jersey. My, my students were the daughters and sons of my father's sawmill workers. I started teaching at age 15 and was a skilled nurse for the Civil War. I grew up in a big house in Newborn Avenue in Atlanta, Georgia. Kids weren't nice to me in school, they'd always call me Tweet or Wilson because when I wore tweed suits or when the basketballs passed me, I would shoot the ball. African American people were treated differently from white people. African American people had to do everything different from white people, like they said before bath and drink from different 1595, my father is Chief Powhatan. I did not know who my mother was because she ran off when I was just a child. Settlers have come. Oh no, how much land will they take? One settler named John Smith had come too far into our land. My father demands Smith's life. So I ran as fast as I could to get to the place where Smith was going to be killed. I saved his life because I wanted to make peace with I was an English soldier, soldier, explorer, and author. I was knighted for my service to Sigismund Bathory, Prince of Transylvania, and his friend Moses Zeekly. I was, I was remembered in my role establishing the first permanent settlement in North America, James. I was born in 1789 in the Rocky Mountains. I was a Shoshone girl when the Hidatsa warriors killed my people even 
kill my people, even my mom. That day I was learning not to When I was seven, I, I helped my mother and father on the farm. My father even let me have my own calf named Blossom. I worked on the farm until I was 15 when I went away to, to work as a doctor at the center. One day I met a man named William Hintz. Soon enough we got married. In 1777, I grew up in Dark County, Ohio on a farm. I left to roam the open fields with my three sisters collecting hickory nuts and stuff. My mom sent me to an orphanage because she couldn't take care of all the kids. People make fun of me, so I changed my name to Annie Oakley instead of Pueblo so Annie Moss. work that was involved in this type of event started way back in December, early December actually, before winter break. They started writing their monologues, they started doing their PowerPoints, preparing their characters for the Living History Museum. Actually, a lot of these kids have been working daily in their free time to design their costumes, to come up with how they were going to go through the Living History Museum as far as their numbers, their parts, the era that they wanted to, to address. It's been a, a year-long experience for them. This is the culminating activity. And the kids really get involved in this type of event because they're living history again through the eyes of the pe people that are pushing their buttons. It's a true wax museum, a living history museum. I was born in Pennsylvania. I was born in 1832. When I was young, my father, Bronson Alcott, is the one person who inspired me to write. Writing was an early passion. I had rich imagination. After my stories became melodramas that me and my sisters would act out. Like I was born in the 1700s and I died in 1818. I was once a silversmith, but then I decided to join the American Revolution. I was also a part of the Sons of Liberty. I became famous. My days are filled with fear and weariness, but for two years I've been in hiding from the German army, also known as Nazis, because Adolf Hitler will take my family to a slave camp for children by being beat and put to work for little food and little water. Adolf Hitler has found my family. The Declaration of Independence. I was mayor of your town during the Battle of your town. I became president in 1800. Let me tell you about a time when I was when I was three, sitting upon a horse, riding with my dad's slave. His name his name was David Tuxie. Before he died, he made my take a few minutes of your time to tell you a little bit about my background. I was born in California. I grew up loving tennis. I thought I would make tennis by perfection, but it changed my mind. I went to Stanford University, studied science and physics. The one day. One day in 1955, I refused to give my seat on a bus to white men. My very back told start the civil rights movement. I worked very hard to help black people win the rights to my starting my hours. I got up at work and heading home on a city bus. Black people have sent back. I'm in Tussie, Alabama, then I moved to Pine Level to live with my grandparents. I am married to Raymond Parks. I am the best seamstress. I had to be nice to all the customers, even how rude they were. I never liked how whites were better than blacks. I dropped out of high school because my mom had cancer and I needed a helper. Then I finished and graduated. Let me tell you about a time when I helped stop segregation. I came to the colonies as a Puritan and set out in Massachusetts Bay. I found that the leadership there was not to my liking and began my own church. The men in the colony did not go to heaven and decided to put me on a trail. At the trail, they excused me from not following Christian. I was fascinated with the aviation at age 15. On my 15th birthday, I was awarded my stamp pilot license, and on my 16th birthday, I was awarded my pilot's license. Let me tell you about the time when I was in the Navy. At the age of 20, I was in the Navy, earning my wings, earning my wings in the Navy, making me the youngest pilot in the world. I became the 16th president of the United States of America. I went against slavery and led the most deadliest war on the man. It was known as the Brothers' War. Some people called it the Civil War. I love the right speeches. Let me tell you about the time that I wrote the two most famous speeches known to America. The Gettysburg Address. I was born off Germany and moved to LA when I was five years old. Even on mathematics was my favorite subject. I always made killer mistakes in college. I always, I always disagreed with my professors, so I made a theory that changed the way of speed of light. My father believed that everyone, including women, should be educated, which is completely unheard of my time. We were a wealthy family because my father owned his own sugar refinery, so he, so he could hire private tutors. We moved to America after my after bonds broke up in Bristol, England, where we lived. I was there. I was born in 1809 in a log cabin in Hardin, Kentucky. County, Kentucky. I was the 16th president. Person. I went on an expedition with Lewis and Clark to explore the Louisiana Purchase. We went there because we were charged by President Jefferson in 1803. Along the Missouri River as we traveled, we had to find a water out to the Pacific Ocean. I had many jobs I had to do, like I guided them to the expedition. I was, I was born on 
April 13, 1743, in a four wooden house in Virginia. When I was born, Virginia was one of the 13 American colonies that I had belonged to England. When I was, then I was elected third president. When I was little, uh, when I was little, I had red hair. I loved, I had a lot of friends that loved to fish, and I'm. I was born in Pennsylvania, Massachusetts. I grew up a sermon for the Thomas family. I became a teacher and taught girls everything I knew. During the summer, I got a job as a sewer and knitter, but I had other ideas. I wanted to do more than just sew and knit. I wanted to join the Revolutionary War. I was so excited to be five. I wanted to grow up being an athlete. My best sport was tennis. I was asked to play tennis with Billie Jean King. Okay, that's enough about me. Let me tell you about my life venture in space. June 18, 1983, I first took off. After we traveled more into space, after we traveled more into space, some of my inventions were the lightning rod, the stove, and bifocal glasses. I persuaded Tom Shreshman to write the Declaration of Independence for our nation and for our freedom. If Tom Shreshman did not write the Declaration I was born in slavery. I later I ran away to freedom. I returned to the South many times to help other slaves find. Let me tell you about the time when I was in the Battle of Gettysburg. That was the most bloodiest battle in the world. I was also in the Mexican War, and, I'm, and I've done a lot of great things in my life, but I've always said to never give up. And there is the most solemn word in our language. I am General Robert E. Lee. I was born on March 3rd, 1847. I grew up in a family of two, uh, two older brothers, a mother who was deaf, and a father. Um, I was, at a young age, I was taught visible speech or sign language. When I was young, my mother taught me and my two older brothers how to play the I was born on February 12, 1809 in Hardin County, Kentucky. I was a husband and a father. I served as the 16th President of the United States and led the country to its greatest competition in the military, more Christ Civil War, by forcing it into slavery. I was, I was from a poor family. I was later becoming self-educated. I became a country lawyer and an elementary student. I was mayor of Virginia during the Battle of Yorktown. The battle was the last of the revolution. I was also elected president in 1800. Let me tell you about a time when I was almost captured by General Cornwallis. When Cornwallis entered our interior, we were almost powerless because all our brave and helping persuade Thomas Jefferson in the writing of the Declaration of Independence. I love to invent, to discuss. I was born July 24th, 1897, and I was a well-known aviator. I wrote many books about my accomplishments. Let me tell you about a time when I flew across the Atlantic. I was not the first person to do so since Charles Lindbergh had flown before me, but I was the first woman to fly from North America to Europe. On June 20th, my dream was to develop the Paul Space Club. It's a Cine American student movie for us today. Two of our greatest astronauts, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin, to land on the moon. They both were in control. I also saved an saved injured crew member in World War II. I helped the United States. I'm going to tell you about the time when I was forced to move out of my seat on a bus. I got on a bus, I paid my fare, and I sat down. Then a white passenger told me to move, and I glanced up at the bus driver and shook my head no. Then he said, I'm calling the police, and I was arrested and brought to jail. Let me tell you about the time when I met Bill Clinton. He awarded me four gold medals. Something like this mean to Shepherdsville Elementary? Well, I'll tell you, it gives our students an opportunity to shine. It's amazing. This is our sixth year. Uh, that we have actually had this event with our Living History Museum. It started our very first year that we've been open, and as I said, the sixth time that we've done this, and every single time I see students shine, who maybe through the school year, uh, maybe haven't given it their all in the classroom, or maybe have even had some behavior issues, whatever the case is. But this is a day that every single student shines, and I will absolutely love it, because they have done the research, they have the knowledge about their character uh, and their in character for this uh, Living History Museum and it is absolutely a great day for Shepherdsville and as you can see uh, I'm sure behind me that the students thoroughly enjoy uh, getting to hear about all the different characters through history and I would like to give a big thank you to the fifth grade team because I know a lot of the extra work goes into this and our boys and girls have done an outstanding job and I've gotten to get around and see several of our characters today and it just really as principal it makes me feel great uh, to see that we have students uh, that will put this much time and effort into a project and not only put time and effort into it give it their very best and uh, it makes our school shine so thank you again for another great job of our living history museum